So, to solve an equation means to find all of the solutions. And soon we're going to learn a lot of procedures for how to solve an equation. But sometimes it's really easy to figure out what the solutions to an equation are. Sometimes we can tell just by looking. That is, sometimes we can solve an equation by inspection. Now there are certain kinds of equations that we can definitely solve by inspection. For example, x equals 7, that's going to be true if x is 7, false otherwise. Right, the solution is that x must represent the number 7. Right, 2x equals 2x. Some expression is equal to exactly the same expression. Those are obviously equivalent. The solution is obviously all real numbers. It's obvious that every number is a solution. And maybe we have an equation that looks like this. 3 equals 5. Is there anything I could possibly make any variable to make that true? No, obviously not. So it's obvious looking at this that there is no solution. There's no way I could possibly make that true. Right, these are the very simplest sorts of equations. We can tell just by looking what the solution is. Right. Ultimately, when we go into our procedures for solving equations, our goal is going to be to get an equation that we can solve by inspection. But depending on our fluency with arithmetic, there are going to be other equations that we can also solve by inspection. What do I mean by that? Let's say I gave you the equation 3x equals 12. So this says that x is a number that if I multiply it by 3, I get 12. Well, what can I multiply by 3 to get 12? Well, obviously, 4. And 4 is the only number that when we multiply it by 3, we get 12. When we multiply 3 by other numbers, we get numbers that are not 12. So this is, in fact, the only solution. Sometimes we need to do a little bit of what's called trial and error when we're solving something by inspection. So let's see another example. Let's say we have the equation 2 plus x is negative 3. And I'm, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, well, I know that x has to be some sort of negative number. Right, what is it? Um, so a 2 and a 3. I think probably either x is negative 1 or x is negative 5. And then I check. 2 plus negative 1, oh, that's positive 1. 2 plus negative 5, oh, that's negative 3. I can use a calculator for this part if I want to. Oh, okay. This one didn't work. But this one did. The solution is x equals negative 5. I, I didn't have to try every number to come up with that. I knew that with a 2 and a 3 and addition and subtraction, there was going to be something about a 1 or something about a 5. Right? I didn't have to try every number. I had to use a little bit of trial and error, though. I had to try two numbers in order to find the solution. That's still solving by inspection.